Now then, welcome back to another episode of Mr. T Does Minecraft. Hi, how you doing, sucker? Today, <laughs> welcome back to another episode on the Hypermine Infinity Evolved server. Hello, and good day, and welcome. I've been doing a little bit of work, a little bit of uh, tidying the place up, making the place look good, a little bit, I guess. Put some doors on, put some pressure plates on, put some signs up for my office block factory area. This is still the ground floor, still haven't progressed much outside of the ground floor. Still haven't built the next level on or anything like that. But I have started doing some more bits and pieces wiring on this first level. And I wanted to get this sort of sorted out before I moved up to the next level and ran out of space. So the idea is not to build the whole thing all in one go. Because it's a lot of marble. Lots and lots of marble. I have run another quarry. You may be able to see the hole on the map there. I've run another quarry right next door to where I am. Uh, just on that ridge there. To get more marble from these hills here. There's marble pockets around the hills. So I grabbed a load more marble. That was a thing. So that I could build the next level out of marble. But I'm going to need to do a lot more quarrying to get all the marble I need. Because I probably need... Um, a 64 stack barrel per floor I'm guessing at that because uh, some of the blocks requires more than one block of marble and there's lots of detail blocks and all that kind of stuff it does take up a lot of marble a lot of resources um, what I've got over here now though is I've split the AE system off so the one controller can have 32 channels on every side of it so that's technically 32 channels times 6, because a cube has 6 sides. What I've been doing with channels, I just wanted to let you know and see what we're going on here. You can put a smart cable in to see just how many channels are active. And on this one it's saying 7 of 8. 7 of the 8 bars are lit. And if we trace it back, we've got this one section here which goes down to where a control panel could be. We've got it coming all the way around here, and this is also 7 of 8, because I took the control panel out, um, just in case. I wanted to move the control panel over to the other room, actually, but that still uh, it leaves me with one channel still in this room. Still on 7 there. On this route, it goes out to a little auto crafter and some other bits and pieces, and that's two channels over this side. So that's two of the 7 it splits off two this way, and so this should be five this way. Five channels that way. So overall, these cables can maintain eight channels. And I've got five coming this way to these things, which is two, two downs, as it were. Two things, two processes. And then there's two channels being used over here. One of them is the crafting storage. Now I could remove the crafting storage, and it will go down to one channel. There we go, one channel. And this will go down to six channels. Okay? If I ever get to nine channels, then the ninth channel, whichever's the furthest away on this circuit, will stop working. So you've got to be careful to stick to eight channels. These cables you can't tell. These cables you can't tell. But a couple of... One of these cables and a bit of redstone and a bit of glowstone gives you a smart cable so you can see how many channels are running on your system. Now I'm just going to put the crafter... Just there. That'll do. Um, in the future, in the future, this will expand out and maybe I'll need more or have more channels in there. There are ways to get more channels. As I say, these controllers have 32 channels per side and you can link multiple controllers together. So I could have a hundred controllers all linked together to make one big controller and each of the sides would have 32 channels. So it's still possible to get lots of channels everywhere. But for right now, that's that. And I've got two channels coming this way down into there, which is basically for the uh, control panels. So I can see what I'm doing. There's the first two of eight channels already used just for control panels to access the system. Uh, the power and everything is still running the same. I'm still planning on having a hardened energy cell for each room and then a power supply running up through the middle. But I've got to think about power supply soon because I'm already running out of yellurium ore. I've processed many times and still nothing uh, nothing concrete has arrived yet for me to have amazing power source. 
Uh, I just keep using your la your uh, In this room, this room is, as you may have seen on the way in, the raw materials room for applied energistics. It makes the silicon and the crystals. So this is kind of half the room is processing those raw materials. The other half, I will probably process some other raw materials that I need in the future. Just nice, simple, um, infinite cycles. Like this one that we already have explored, the infinite silicon, just requires power and it gives you infinite silicon. So I've got storage buses, which take up most of the devices for the channels. Uh, and in this case, it's required. So I've got a barrel of sand on a storage bus so I can access it anywhere in the AE system. I've got a barrel of cobblestone which I can access through a storage bus from any of the AE system. And around the back here the byproduct of making silicon is the, um, the gravel which also has a storage bus so I've got access to all this gravel at all times. Also any gravel that comes into the system will go into this basic uh, barrel first. I thought about putting a void upgrade on these but then these machines would just constantly run and having having this running constantly to make cobblestone is not a problem because it's just a cobblestone gen it doesn't even use power but having the cobblestone then pulverized constantly to make sand is yeah, a problem and having the sand pulverized constantly to make silicon would lead too much so i put this little mini chest there so that i would only actually have two stacks in the pulverizer and one stack in the mini chest at all times and as for the other devices that I've crafted, this one is a simple one. Uh, we've got an open crate from Batania. And the best thing about an open crate is it's uh, like a dispenser in a way. But you don't need to trigger it with a redstone signal. Anytime something goes into an open crate, it just falls out and drops down. So what I've got here is an interface with the Fluix crystals available. Fluix crystals you make by putting nether quartz, charged certis quartz and redstone in a pool. So this knows to put one of each of those in. It will go into the crate because it tries, when it's told to craft something, it will automatically push into the nearest inventory and say that's where I'm going to get it back from. And then the ingredients will drop down into the pool, the change will take place and then this transfer node has a world interaction upgrade which means it sucks up items in the world like a vacuum hopper and it also has a filter for the fluix crystals so it won't suck up the um the 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 the, the nether quartz charged certis quartz and redstone that falls into the water it will only suck up the fluix crystal when it's changed and transformed right and then, of course, that goes back into the interface, and the interface puts it back into the AE system. So that means that's a nice little closed loop with only an interface as the go-to. So I've put a crafting pattern in there uh, to tell it that's how you make Fluix crystals. So, easy. The charged crystals over here is also fairly easy. Uh, in this case, we've got an interface that puts the Certis Quartz into the available inventory next to it. And then once the charge takes place, it gets sucked out and comes back up here. Now, I don't think I need to worry about making this a whitelisted charge certis quartz. But I did it anyway. Uh, I think there's it only outputs charge certis quartz and it only allows input of certis quartz. So I should think that that sucking out and putting it back into the interface would be okay without the whitelist. But I've left it as that anyway. And of course, these things can be powered through AE cables. AE machines can be powered by AE cables, so I didn't need to put a power supply down here. Uh, whereas this over this side, I needed a power supply because they're thermal expansion machines. And then this beauty in the middle here. Well, <clears throat> this is one of the one of the things that has always been like an issue is waiting for seeds to grow into uh, crystals. So I've got a similar thing. I've got. The middle of the workings there is another open crate from Batania. What, I've, what I have here is the interface at the start, right? And everything leads to the interface to put things back in. So it's a closed system in and of itself in that way. So the interface is going to know how to make patterns. Well, going to know how to make um, seeds. And we're going to sort that out 
straight away. Okay, to use patterns, you need a pattern terminal. Now, a pattern terminal looks very similar to a crafting terminal, made slightly differently. Uh, it's a crafting terminal with an engineering process makes a pattern terminal. So it's an upgrade on a crafting terminal, basically. And inside here, I can set up um, the crafting recipes, patterns, that the AE system can then understand. So each pattern is like a crafting recipe. So, for instance, what do we get to make the seeds grow? Which is what we're working on, first of all. This is going to be tons and tons of patterns in future, right? To make sand and certis quartz turn into a certis quartz seed is a simple crafting pattern. And I could teach that straight away to there, and that now is an encoded pattern. However, I don't want the seeds that way, so I'm going to shift, right click, and clear that black pattern and turn it back into a blank pattern. Uh, what I'm dealing with in my setup is I don't have the Certis Quartz dust created. And I do have the sand created. But I can also use cobblestone to generate the sand. So let's get the cobble. Cobble. Thank you. Give me a piece of cobblestone. So I'm going to do one piece of cobblestone and one crystal. Uh, one of those Certis Quartz crystals. So very, very raw materials will make nothing according to the pattern terminal. But if I change this to a processing pattern, it will basically work with an interface. The interface will then go, right, so if I put a piece of cobble and a Certis Quartz crystal into the adjacent inventory, I will receive back the item in the end here. Okay, so each of the seeds is crafted as such. A bit of sand and a bit of dust. A bit of sand, a bit of dust. A bit of sand, a bit of dust, right? So the input for this machine is a piece of cobble that gets pulverized into sand and one of these crystals that gets pulverized into its dust component comes into here and then outputs as a seed. The seed then goes, grows, and then the seed comes, well, the produce comes back up and into this interface which will be one of these pure crystals. So then the pure crystals need to be part of my pattern. So this is a, a kind of an obscure crafting recipe. Uh, you have general crafting, which could be like, I don't know, let's put all the cobble in the world around, and there we go. That could make a furnace. So we could craft a pattern so that the machine understands how to make a furnace. Or we can go for a processing pattern which understands that if you put the cobblestone and this Certis Quartz crystal into a machine, it will output that, which allows you to do a lot of other things. So that's how to make the pure crystals, I've told it. And that's going to be how to make the Fluix pure crystals. There we go. And this one is going to be the Nether Quartz Fluix crystal, uh, nether quartz pure crystals. There we go. Okay. You also have inventory you can access here as well. So I can throw all of these things back into the inventory of the AE system through the pattern terminal because it's an upgraded crafting terminal basically. Uh, so that's pretty cool. And over here then we can then train this machine in the art of making all of these pure crystals. So this is my pure crystal creation chamber. So from the raw materials which go into the pulverizer, through to make the seeds, through to make the crystals themselves all charged, and back out when they're fully done into the interface, which is connected up into the AE system to make it all work. I do have an on-off switch there as well, which I do between times just to turn it off for a bit. But that can also be automated so that I can have this on like a, a level emitter cycle. But that's future tech as far as we're concerned right now. At the minute, I'm just concerned with getting everything working order. So now in the terminal, we've got stored items. We've got stored and craftable, or we've got craftable. So these are now all craftable by my system. So the Fluix crystals, I could craft 10 Fluix crystals. It will put five redstone, five nether quartz, and five charged certis quartz. It will, uh, well, it will put one 
but it knows how to make four more. He knows how to craft the four. So it would make all five, and then I'd get the ten Fluix Crystals. Yeah? Easy enough done. And also the seeds now, it could make ten of the seeds by putting ten cobblestone, ten Fluix Crystals to craft those there. Now these inscribers are very, 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 very... I can't, uh, I can't state enough how annoying they are to use in an applied energistic system that is so, 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 so uber cool. Why they have this is beyond me. But still, we are going to do this. We are going to do this. I'm going to have those that way. I believe that there's the input from the top, input from the bottom, output from the right, input from the left or the back. I believe. So let's test this out first before I start messing around too far. I want the first one to have an import for silicon. So let's put silicon in there. Are you going to put silicon in the right place? Yes. Okay. So now I just need to put the silicon press up there. It currently doesn't have any power because it's not connected to the power in any way, shape or form. It's only connected via an export bus. This one has power but it isn't set up properly yet. Next up, I want a storage bus, and I think the storage buses need to go on the outside. So I'll connect that up there. Let's see if this will operate as a storage bus. And yeah, it's now giving me power and doing so just off the storage bus. That's okay then. So that's now making printed silicons. So printed silicons, I should have silicon in here. 43, is it going up? Is it going up? Is it going up? Doesn't appear to be going up, does it? Which means that it is not reading that as a storage location on that side from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop that off. Leave it connected. Um, actually, no, I'm going to rather connect it from the bottom, I think. Rather connect it from the bottom side. And connect this up on this side so i'll have those as the storage buses and how are you just hovering there dude thank you very much but anyway let's put that on there and there and let's see if that now sets it up well it's it's making them still so it's making them every couple of ticks in it so let's see silicon 48 49 yeah we can see that it's now rising the number of presses it's done is rising so there we go 50 so now that will store a full stack in here it won't leave there for any reason whatsoever it's only going to store a full stack in there now i think i could possibly tighten this up a little bit more because well i like to have this on view so you can see the presses in action but at the same point i wanted to make it a little bit neater and tidier within an area that's hopefully like a 4x4 four four area. So maybe, just maybe, let's take all this down and start thinking about this again. We've got to have the input on the back and the output on the right hand side. Okay, that's a given. And we don't need the top or the bottom for anything. Okay. So let's see about setting these up in a slightly different format and hope for the best. Hope for the best and then we'll set them all back up again. Okay, so I want to use this 4x4, 2x2 uh, two two area here. So it's in line with the centre of the window and it's in line with the centre of that as well. I'll have this dude here and this dude here i think maybe yeah 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 that, that's gonna work that's gonna work let's go up and shift click it down and same with this one up and shift click it down so now i can have storage buses on the sides where they exit the machine and i can have export buses on the back where they enter the machine 
and I can put the power well it's lessening the number of cables as well I can put the cables just going up through like so up through like so and up and out the top I don't need it necessarily to go through more than one place I will just connect it there for now and disconnect that there I think that pipe going that cable going straight up out there would possibly be better looking though wouldn't it so we'll do that we'll have that going up and out that way and change this around slightly up here nope not that there. there slightly there we go all right and there awesome now the other thing that i've got going on over here is where did that half slab go i don't know i've got some more half slabs i've also got these hollow marble slabs so I'll put the half slab there and I can put the hollow marble slab so that it goes around the pipe. So the pipe is just going through the hole, which is pretty good. Oh, also, in the meantime, I set up this over here just to help me quicken my crafting. I'm going to better get a better spot for this molecular assembler, but for now, this is good enough. Uh, this crafts quartz glass for me. The quartz fiber, which goes into making the quartz glass cable for me as well. So I've got this little uh, crafting chamber that auto crafts for me when I request things. But more into that kind of stuff in a future episode because, well, it, it it's a nice thing to leave all to itself. So let's see. This is a nice, neat looking thing. And now it's given me the half slump back. Thank you very much. Now we've got to kind of program it. Program it and tell it what to do. So let's make this first one our silicon. So we'll put silicon going into there. We'll make the one underneath it gold. So we'll put our gold going into there. That looks like it's done the job. Yep. Yeah. And on this side, we will have... Uh, I need to do it on the back here, don't I? This one, we will have our pure quartz. And this one, we'll have our diamonds. Okay, now, the only thing that needs crafting here is the pure Certis quartz crystal. So I would need an upgrade for this to craft them as I need them. Um, but I might do something else with that just yet. I'll see. So they're all hovering in, keeping stock. That's good. So if I put the presses in there, are they going to get power? Are you going to give me power? No. So I might need to do something set up for the power as well. Previously, the power was going in through there, but I'm guessing that's not a thing anymore. Or I've disconnected the power up there somewhere and forgotten how to change it. But the calculation presses and all that kind of stuff can go into there like that. Uh, the the idea... Oh, they are getting some power. That one is getting some power anyway. It's got the power in from the top there, yeah. Okay. Maybe I need to add another connection of some kind into those. I could definitely just power that top one from the top like that and i could also just put power cables underneath these guys as well to power these ones from the bottom like that there we go that'll work uh unfortunately that means then i don't use the blocks but still it's a nice neat looking structure or in and of itself right smack bang in the middle there it's pretty good and these should now be processing and storing printed logic circuits and this one will be doing printed silicon circuits. And round here, of course, we're doing uh, s calculation circuits and printed engineering circuits. So they'll get up to a full stack of each in there. And the storage bus should allow me to access these circuits from in here. There we go, look. So printed calculation circuit, engineering circuits on nine, logic circuits on seven. So they should go up, yeah, they've gone up to 10, and this one should go up to 8, there we go. So as these fill up in here, I will have a stack of logic circuits, for instance, and this storage bus will access those and allow me to draw them out of here as and when I need them. I keep putting the circuit wrong there. Uh, as and when I need them, I can take them out of there and it will then go combining with the printed silicon and all that which is the next stage 
but this has taken up one, two, three, four, eight, eight of my channels on one cable to get this done and fully automated. I kind of like the look of it though. It looks pretty good to me. I don't, on the other hand, like the look of this. This does not look neat to me yet. There is another way. I'm sure there's another way. This is just, I had an idea, started putting things in the right places, ended up putting things everywhere, and now it works. <laughs> it's a monstrosity, but it works. It's a kind of a symmetrical non monstrosity nonetheless, but it works. Cables everywhere. I will refine this and show you a bit later on. But I thought we'd just finish up this episode showing the processing from making that to making this. And hopefully it's all fully automated now. So let's see. I've got some calculation processes in there. Uh, let's go to crafted, actually. Let me show you this. So let's put all this back in here as well. Have that. You can have it all. Thank you. So I've got the logic processors. Let's put them uh, sort by number. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Logic processors, calculation processors, and engineering processors are all craftable in there now. I've also got these formation cores and blank patterns and cables and covered cables and quartz fibers and glass and all these other things. So you know where I'm getting all the resources from, all the raw materials, but I've also got this set up over here. I've brought my little crafting storage. It's only a 1K. I'll do more than that eventually, but just for now, getting set up. Just to make it easier for me, I've put some of the basics ingredients for many crafting recipes for AE in this interface that will use this molecular assembler to create things and I've put a couple of basic vanilla recipes in there to make the sticky pistons and the pistons and all that that I've been needing for some of them as well so let's just show you how that works so let's craft a piston all right oh I missed it let's craft a piston next and it will use the processor and it should have it's probably already done it it's probably already done it let's go uh let's show sorted yeah it's already done it craft a sticky piston next it's good just gonna add a slime ball in it yeah it's done <laughs> it's that fast it's quickly doing things for me but in let's say uh an import bus or an export bus or a storage bus or something like that it's going to need to craft all the component parts to make what I need. So when I need an interface, for instance, an interface, an interface is thus. It needs two formation cores, some glass and some iron. Now, I've taken to an idea that I had this afternoon while I was setting all this up and recording it and all sorting it all out to have the system all sort of like self-sufficient and on its own sort of area. So here is what I would call a, an input chest or um, a resources chest. So somewhere else in my bases, somewhere else in my base, I will put a stack of each of these kind of items in an ender chest. And that ender chest will be sitting right here with a storage bus on the back, only receiving one stack of each, but constantly refilling when I use it. Okay, so all these materials... I get from somewhere else and bring into the system here. I'm then crafting all the resources and things and bits and pieces out of what's in there. Uh, and I'm keeping all of my AE stuff on this level, all my AE crafting stuff, separate. Uh, so it all ends up going into this single chest. Which is why you don't see everything I've got in there. You just see everything that's in the AE crafting area in this um, screen. I moved this round here so that I had my portable storage of everything I've got just round the corner for crafting up the first items and getting items out to put into that chest, that kind of stuff. That chest will be an ender chest and hopefully that'll be pretty soon and I'll have something automating the stocking of that ender chest as well. But for right now, this is very, very clean and I can see exactly what I've got, what I'm craftables and everything like that. And I'm generally just making everything that AE can craft. Uh, let's make another calculation press. Let's go next and start, and we'll see that in action. Okay, so it comes in. This has a recipe in here for those, which you'll put into this chest. The chest then pumps or pipes the items out into the right locations. 
It then creates the circuit and then the A system removes it from the inscriber and puts it back into there. So I should have two now. Should have two of those. Yep, yeah, there we go. I've got two calculations processors. And this isn't the neatest job in the world, but I like to do it a bit better. On the back here, we're going redstone down and into the back. We've got here, we've got each of these are whitelisted, so only that product can go down into the top. And then at the front here, we've got the silicon, which comes down and goes in the bottom side. So it goes in the right places. Then the power's coming in from this side, and so that powers it. And then I've got an uh, import bus, which imports items from its finished slot back into the AE system. So it's kind of ugly, but it'll do. And this is not quite everything I want. I'm kind of getting an idea for space, but that's it. That's good for now. Anyway, for the now, Mr. T signing out. So thank you all very, very much for watching another episode of Hypermine Infinity Evolved. I've uh, done quite a bit of processing today, quite a bit of work today on the auto crafting of applied energistics. So please leave a like if you enjoyed it. And if you enjoy it some more, come back next episode. Um, I don't think I've got much more of this auto crafting to do before I can basically just get on and do it all and craft any AE stuff that I want whenever I want it. But there is a power issue. And there is also supply issue, supplying the demand of this first floor office here at Silicon Valley. So I will be working on that over the next few episodes. Thank you very, very much once again. I will see you around.